Hey, remember when I said I was going to actually have Toy Bo Rabbit's Toy Box be about toys? Well, I wasn't lying. Today we're going to talk about the Bucky O'Hare figure I ordered from Boss Fight Studios. Now, Bucky O'Hare was one of the many, 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 many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ripoffs that came out during the day. It was about a rabbit from the planet Warren, which is a really funny joke if you know rabbits. Kind of unique on its own, it's kind of like if you combine Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Flash Gordon. Uh, the entire series is available on YouTube if you want to watch it. The toys were your standard fare cartoon action figure toys. They had posable arms and came with weapons and came in about just about every damn character on the show and for the most part had their own unique molds. Boss Fight Studios has done a pretty good job replicating the original feel of the toy while also making its own unique spin on it. They have much more articulation, they have a little bit more accessories with them and going on, and as you can see, Bucky doesn't look so constipated here. Bucky himself has a few different alternates. You can see that there is a quote-unquote stealth mission Bucky, as well as an Easter Bunny Bucky, which is unfortunately no longer for sale. The stealth Bucky comes with a lunchbox, I believe, which is pretty interesting. The current lineup of figures is Bucky, Deadeye, Jenny, and this gorilla fellow whose name I don't remember. And Jenny has a astral projection alt, where it's a translucent figure with different colored psychic energy, which is pretty cool. The actual picture posted on the website is actually not that doctored. Uh, I'll be comparing that picture with some pictures I've taken myself of my own. Bucky comes with a few accessories. He comes with a set of fists as well as a set of hands to just have generic posing. As far as the faces go, I honestly could not tell you a difference. I think one of them is supposed to be slightly angry, but I don't really know. I honest to, I honest to God could not tell you a difference. The packaging of the toy is very similar to the toy's original packaging from the 1980s, which is a nice callback. The plastic sleeve can actually be removed from the cardboard backing, which is really cool if you wanted to, like, you know, take certain things out of the box, or if you, like, wanted to take it out of the box to pose it, and then very carefully put it back into the box. I couldn't tell you why you wanted to do that, but, you know, just in case. Personally, I'm going to use the cardboard backing as, like, a little poster, because it almost looks like one. There's a little bit of like a splash, a color splash, but it's no big deal. The figure itself is decently posable. Uh, here I attempted to recreate his pose from the cover of the NES game. The ears swivel. The front of the feet have a pivot if you want to put him on tiptoes or like stand him irregularly. Uh, there's no knee joints, but there are hip joints. Ah, forgive my mistake. There are knee joints. They're just really stiff and hard to bend. The cape is a pain in the ass to shove in, and it feels like if you don't push it in all the way, it pops back out with just a tap. Um, I had to remove his head to really squeeze the cape in there, which really sucked. The guns can attach to his back and his holster just like the original toy, which is a nice touch. All in all, I have to say this is a pretty awesome figure, and I definitely plan on ordering more from this line in the future.